Is it just me, or is it getting crazier out there? <laughs> Joker came out nearly five years ago. I know, where has the time gone? It was written and directed by Todd Phillips, who did Starsky and Hutch, the movie, not the series. I don't think he was old enough to get a directorial license back when the series came out. He did Due Date, he did War Dogs, and he did the Hangover Trilogy. Yes, believe it or not, the man that did this, this movie that made over a billion dollars worldwide, somehow, did the Hangover Trilogy. A trilogy that had enough material for maybe one and a half movies. Also, I hate to say it, but the Hangover movies really honestly pissed me off because for all the great comedies that have come out, there are movies that should have done a whole lot better than the goddamn Hangover Trilogy. But nevertheless, money talks and bullshit walks. Speaking of bullshit, we also had another writer involved in this. No, that's unfair. Scott Silver, who did The Fighter. And you have an extremely committed performance by Joaquin Phoenix as Arthur Fleck. This tells the origin story of Joker. And, yeah, in case you didn't figure that out from the title, and in preparation for Joker Folie et Dieu, I decided to rewatch this, and myself and the Derminator did do a review of this about five years ago. It was a lot of fun. I do miss doing uh, reviews with my best friend. Glad he's doing well. Maybe in the future that will possibly happen, but it was cool to talk about this. And I do want to say, upon rewatching, there are good parts to this, but the criticisms I had before still hold true. I really don't know why this movie is seen as so iconic by some people, but that being said, everybody likes different things. There are a lot of people, however, that are very divided, saying that this is really, really goddamn bad. I fall somewhere in the middle. There are bad parts to this. There are a lot of self-serving parts to this particular movie. You've got to cut out the slow-mo and cut down the runtime by 10 to 15 minutes, and outside of Joaquin Phoenix's extremely committed performance... There's not a lot to this. I mean, yes, in an origin story and a movie titled Joker, you would expect that. But you have talent uh, in front of the camera. You have Robert De Niro as Murray Franklin. You have Zazie Beetz, who I'm really happy got to be in a big movie like this and I think is a terrific actress. She plays Sophie. You have Frances Conroy. It's a Beautiful Sight. She plays the mother of Arthur Fleck, but she doesn't have long to fight. And then you also have uh, a midget in this, which kind of made me laugh because uh, one character, Randall, says, So I have a question. Do you call it miniature golf or just golf? I don't know why that made me laugh, but look, um, the jokes fly over short people's heads. I'm sorry, I'm not, but nevertheless. So, yeah, it's going to be a spoiler-filled Redux review because I figured why not see with, you know, fresher eyes if stuff still holds up. And there are parts of this that hold up. Uh, it did have a $55 million budget. I don't know if that includes marketing, but even if it didn't, it made uh, $96.2 million in its opening weekend, so I think it was going to be a hit. $335.4 million U.S. gross and $1.07 billion worldwide. I don't know if Joker Folie et Dieu is going to do as well. It's definitely uh, been divided among critics and audiences so far. This is divided among critics and audiences. Again, there are people that absolutely love this movie, and then there are people that absolutely despise it. I think there are some people that miss the whole goddamn message, because Joker isn't a hero, or even an anti-hero, he's just a nut job. That's pretty much it. Is he a creation of the society that shunned him? No, he was just always nuts, and society may have pushed him along, but that's about it. <coughs> Outside of Joaquin Phoenix's performance, this movie's just okay. That's really it. There are some great shots. The shots on the Murray Franklin show, the closing part where he, you know, basically confesses to all his crimes. And yes, you have the dance scene down the steps with Gary Glitter's song playing. Google the name Gary Glitter and then see if you can watch that scene the same way again. You're welcome. You're welcome. Because if I have to remember this shit, then so do all of you people. So he goes to therapy, he's on medications, Gotham City is not doing all that well, obviously, and they have ties to Bruce Wayne and Thomas Wayne, the mayor. You know, and the Wayne parents would end up getting shot in the alley. And, again, like, very committed performance. That's the one thing about Joaquin Phoenix. He's extremely weird and off-putting a lot, but when he wants to dive into a role, hell, what he does, Johnny Cash and walk the line. Very, very good shit. But... 
Yeah, Thomas Wayne, he, you know, wants to clean up Gotham City. Yeah, about that. And Todd Phillips at times does actually treat Joker's origin story properly. Clearly, any good stuff that's happening in his life, any stuff that he sees working, like a possible relationship with Sophie's, uh, or with Zazie Beats' of Sophie, is clearly all in his goddamn head, because he's always been like this, and that's the one thing. Like, yes, there's the preponderance of backstory with his mother, um, you know, being, you know, adopting him and being in an institution and everything. And by the way, the guy that said they set up a trap for him, that's him in this. He's the guy with the, you know, um, the administrative assistant. That was actually kind of wild to me. I was like, oh shit, he was in this. But nevertheless, I'm going to talk about some of the stuff I enjoyed in Joker, but also some of the stuff that I didn't. Um, <clears throat> I do like how they did at least build on the relationship with him and his mother. And that the more stuff he found out, it was obvious that it, it was like almost a Norman Bates-like situation. Maybe not quite like Psycho 4. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Done near the end of, um, you know, Anthony Perkins' life. But nevertheless, you know, you see the Tonight Show with Murray Franklin. And Robert De Niro actually was pretty good in a supporting role here. <clears throat> but he imagines himself in the crowd. And that Arthur gets introduced, and he says, you know, uh, my mother, you know, I live with my mother, I take care of my mother. And he, and Murray's like, don't poo-poo that. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. I live with my mother until I made it big. And you always want to take care of your parents, take care of the people who love you. But she always tells me to put, you know, uh, to smile and put on a happy face. Again, there are obvious indications of where this is going to go. And obviously we know how the Joker character goes and goes and stumbles in some places. And no, he's not the best Joker perform or you know best person to play Joker. One, it's an origin story, but putting a different spin on it isn't bad. The problem is the movie spins its wheels quite often. There are points where they could have cut some stuff out and we wouldn't have missed shit, but enough scenes work to give this a recommendation. Arthur's got a gun thanks to Randall, the guy that he beats up a little bit later on. <coughs> um, he you know, manufactures a relationship with Sophie. I, I mean, I, honestly, I don't know who would not want to imagine themselves with a woman like Zazie Beats. I'm just saying, attractive woman, seems personable. But maybe don't do that to the point that you're stalking somebody. Don't do that. You can imagine how it would be with somebody, but maybe keep your hands to yourself and stay and keep your distance. So he sees a stand up, you know, as inspiration and everything. And he writes jokes now in a journal. And then after getting beat up when he's doing sign work, you know, earlier in the movie, after getting this gun, these guys try beating him up and he ends up killing them in the subway, which kind of inspires a movement among all these, you know, people that are dressed up like, you know, in clown masks and all this. And that that's nice that they at least built that a bit, but I mean, they would build some of it and it just felt like they accelerated right to the end. Like, oh shit, we've done too much. Uh, we've done too much stuff that really didn't matter in the end. Let's just suddenly go with a crazy ending. The slow mo was overdone. Not so. Not so much of Zack Snyder. If Zack Snyder directed this. This movie would have been three hours. So <clears throat> Arthur does end up snapping, leaving his job. I did like the subway scene, by the way. That was actually pretty good. And. Yeah, he, you know, Thomas Wayne says, what kind of, you know, per, uh, person would do that and hide behind a mask? Ha <laughs> I get it, because of who his son would be. You get it. You get it. Uh, Todd Phillips probably should be arrested for how much stuff he did on the nose, like he was Tony Khan, a booking meeting. Um, thanks, guys. But, you know, he, he says to his therapist, <coughs> Arthur does, you ask me if I'm having negative thoughts, all I have are negative thoughts. And... His stand-up goes tits up immediately. He's just seen as laughing at his own jokes and that kind of stuff. That became the meme where, you know, he would just laugh at his own shit and people would post that clip as, or the gif as being, you know, like laughing at a bad joke. The clown vigilante stuff does get attention. So people are like, you know, kill the rich. We're doing all these protests. Um, he confronts Thomas Wayne after seeing some letters that his mother wrote to Thomas Wayne because, um, you know, she used to work for the Waynes. So he somehow manages to get into this, uh, 
like venue and talk to Thomas Wayne. But Thomas Wayne says, you know, your mother was a sick woman. It's not she was a bad employee. She was a sick woman. That you're adopted. I'm not your father. And there's some issues. And he's like, but we look alike. You know, because he's so, again, in his own goddamn head and so, got, and so, so loves his mother that that's how he would be. Murray ends up playing Arthur's uh, clip or, you know, video on his show. <coughs> and then ends up basically, um, you know, basically getting um, gaining a lot of attention from Arthur. And Arthur has Sophie with him. Except she's not with him because he's manufactured all this shit all this time. So, I, I don't know why in the world it was just so funny to see him, like, talk to... Bruce Wayne, because get it, get it, you know, we got Joker and Bruce Wayne. I didn't know necessarily about the age difference, but whatever, play around the timeline, it's fine. I guess I guess it sort of makes sense, given what we saw in the Tim Burton one and what, you know, has been in the comics or graphic novels for the purists. But Arthur um, goes to the hall, you know, goes to the you know Arkham State Hospital, Arkham Asylum, as it were. And manages to steal his mom's records after talking to, they set up a trap for him, you know, talking to that guy. And yeah, he wasn't treated all that well, so now he's smoking in the, um, smoking in the hospital. And smothers his mother, the smothers mother, as it were. And I used to think my life is a tragedy, but no, it's a fucking comedy. So he smothers his mother, prepares for the show, Randall and the midgets show up, <coughs> and he... Ends up um, shooting Randall and then just beating the shit out of him, which was a nice little bit of violence. That was nice. Um, and Gary Glitter plays as he's going down the steps. Do, 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 do. Hey, he's arrested for child pornography. Do, 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 do. Hey. Yeah. That's what he was arrested and charged with. And the piece of shit's still alive. Wouldn't be if anybody, you know, reasonable got near him. So, nevertheless, um, I, I did kind of like how he made, he said the midget was always good to him or whatever. I mean, you know, it, it, it's because the midget was always good at uh, working, even if when he was on duty, they were always short-staffed. I will stop making fun of short people one of these days. Just grow up. Oh, you can't. Anyway, so, he gets on the backstage for the Murray show, Murray Franklin show. Says, hey, Murray, one small favor. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? Coincidentally, by the way, at the Benoit household, he said, hey, Nancy, when you introduce me, when you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? What? <coughs> yeah, I'm going to hell for that, but I don't really care. And it's showtime. He's fully cracked. He confesses all his stuff. He's going nuts. It's crazy. Um, I did kind of like the just absolute pure insanity of this scene. It was actually a pretty good scene. This is actually where the movie excels when it does stuff like this. And he ends up shooting Murray. Good dialogue here also. And grabs it and, well, that show, and then it cuts out. And now Gotham is fully inflamed. The cops can't do anything. Um, he's arrested. They end up hitting the cop car and rescuing him, and now he's seen as their as, as their savior. But then he's locked up in Arkham Asylum. So maybe he was actually not actually hit, and he was just taken to Arkham Asylum, and he imagined being seen as the, you know, as the savior. What could be in his head? What could not be? But then um, he is at Arkham Asylum, and he's absolutely insane. And now we see what happens with uh, Joker fully adieu. So yeah, there you go. Now I do want to say I like the makeup differences. And I like how, you know, they set up some nice little things here. I just don't know about doing a musical and, you know, making it like that. But we'll see what happens. But Joker, upon reflection, has good moments. Joaquin Phoenix is extremely committed performance and some good scenes. It's also very self-serving and not as great, I think, as some of the people really say it is. That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. Well, what's your opinion? Upon rewatching, do you think the Joker holds up? Did you like it the first time, not like it the second time? Did you not like it the first time and feel no reason to watch the second one? Let me know. Um, if I had to give it a grade, I'd say a B at the best. At the best. 
because really, if you take Joaquin Phoenix's performance out of this, it's almost an F, for God's sakes. Because nothing against everybody else, but if you put somebody else in there that doesn't give as much of a committed performance, the grade drops significantly. So nevertheless, agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle, and letterbox handle in the description. I'm John Rentland. I'll see you soon.